Good morning, everybody. First of all, welcome you all for a webinar. A very, very important topic. And right now, what uh, Indian doctors are facing, uh, second to the COVID-19 infection, mycoramycosis, and, uh, and where we stand. And uh, let me introduce our moderate today, Prashini Gangasani, a cardiologist and, uh, in Atlanta, and also a past uh, co-chair of uh, Board of Trustees of RP. And uh, he was a uh, chair of uh, Global Healthcare Summit in Hyderabad, and uh, also uh, co chair of the Atlanta Convention in uh, uh, 2019. And also currently also he's going to be chair of uh, uh, our current uh, convention going to Atlanta in the July 4th weekend. Uh, Sini doesn't need much interaction, but uh, he's very active and uh, in Atlanta area and nationwide. And uh, I will request the senior to introduce our speaker, Dr. Dwarakana, that doesn't need interest also. He is our very, very popular man in RP uh, family. And uh, he's our uh, uh, actually representative for RP as overseas. And, uh, He's also chair of uh, Global Healthcare Summit in uh, Hyderabad. Without him, I don't think uh, uh, Global Healthcare Summit ha never happened because of his help. You know, everything went smooth and I uh, witnessed that. And please welcome Dr. Dwarkan Reddy. Please go ahead and introduce Dr. Dwarkan Reddy. Thank you. Thank you, Sudhakar. Uh, thank you, API and API President and Executive Committee for giving us this opportunity to do the webinar as well as working with uh, eGlobal Doctors, which is a telehealth platform which started about two months ago, initially as a commercial platform, but when all this COVID thing came, so we decided that I think we need to give more um, importance to the second wave of COVID pandemic to see how we can help uh, Indian population, especially relieving them of their anxiety and the stress during the time of the COVID pandemic. I really appreciate our API and SEWA coming together along with the doctors for SEVA. Within two weeks, we had about over 250 physicians signed up to do the, the volunteer work. And I think was, I was amazed how dedicated our Indian physicians from United States and United Kingdom so far working every day, initially started with 8.30 in the night after working for 12 hours and then progressively increasing. Now we went for up three hours to eight to nine hours. And then some of them doing on the phone, some of them on video communication. So recently we signed up with the MOUs with the SWAS and the, working with the governments of Telangana, AP and few other state governments have how to help more people in this COVID pandemic. And hopefully there's no third wave, but at the time, if there is anything, we are ready to help. And also we're getting calls from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Nepal to do the same kind of a thing, what we did for our Indian community, our motherland. So I think even though we started with the, initially with uh, India, but I think we want to expand to everywhere. We're also working with a great group of rehab people who work through eGlobal Doctors, they want to help other uh, patients who relieve, who got out of the, the COVID pandemic disease, respiratory failure, and still getting weaker. So, so far we've seen over 2000 patients in on eGlobal platform. So I would, I would, before I think uh, Dwarakana starts, I think I want to just give Five minutes to uh, Prasad Garmela from Seva Foundation, uh, Seva USA, for partnering with us and how Seva has been helping along with RP in this uh, COVID pandemic. And I request uh, all of them, all, all of you, to be part of this e global doctors initiative with your time. I think if you can join, this uh, malpractice is covered by the the telehealth platform, and you can do it at your own time, at your own uh, from your home. So I think uh, that will be a great help for all the people here all over the, the world. Thank you. Thank you. Prasad is a uh, pulmonologist and a critical care specialist uh, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. He's also my neighbor. He's also from my alumni, Carmel Medical College. Uh, he's uh, very well known in uh, Atlanta as well as in the United States for his, all his philanthropic activities through SEVA, not only SEVA, but multiple organizations he's involved with. He's also our spiritual chair for the coming Atlanta convention in 2000. 21. Uh, Prasad. Thank you, Srinu. Thank you. My only, uh, you know, minute to fame is I know Srini Gangasani. Dr. Srini, one, one more thing for girl, Dr. Prasad. What the feedback we got for Prasad was he's very approachable, you know, so that's very, very nice and great quality of any human being. So thank you, Dr. Prasad. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. I 
I really appreciate it. Thank you, Api, Dr. Sudhakar, and Executive Committee for giving us the opportunity. And it's a wonderful partnership working with uh, Api and eGlobal doctors. And I think uh, we all had the emotion to help, and it, we got the opportunity to through these platforms and uh, you know being a part of the team to help as many people that we could. You know that made us uh, feel like we did something and uh, achieved something and helped the motherland. Uh, from the Seva International point of view, from the time it started last week of April or so, uh, what we started doing is like collecting the equipment and sending it to India, distributing over there, and also finding out what the needs are on the ground, and then trying to get that same equipment. So the quick recap, this is a one-month report from, can, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Yeah. So yes. these are all the different things Seva International has, was able to achieve. Um, the good thing is because of all this extraordinary amount of support that Seva International got, you know, we were able to raise about $26 million so far and a lot of good work went into it. And uh, uh, so these are all the, it's on the website. So we were able to very quickly get some 250 ventilators or so, and uh, they're actually uh, delivered. Uh, these are some uh, Philips ventilators some 40,000 pulse ox meters, almost 10,000 or so oxygen concentrators. There are more. This is a um, last week version. We are updating it every month or so because all the volunteers working in India are busy distributing and all that. So the one of the main goals for SEVA for long-term sustainability is this thing called Mission O2 plan. So basically a 250 liters per minute capacity, 500 liters per minute capacity oxygen generation plants can be installed anywhere in India with the help of uh, SEVA. So we have three companies who can get this installed. So what we're trying to do is like raise this so much amount of money, 81,000 for a 250 liter one and 500 liters one for $121,000. So SEVA has already um, started about 15 oxygen plants currently in, in, in India. And the goal is to do 100 of them in the next uh, three months, hopefully before the next wave hits. The estimates are there is going to be a third wave. So that's why we're trying to build up the resilience and in whatever way we can help with the government and other non-governmental um, organizations. So the BiPAPs were sent and hygiene kits were also sent. So SEVA has become the main channel for distributing. Even United Nations operations also sent us that um, sending the equipment through SEVA International. Um, we were able to quickly adapt and then be able to distribute and create all these networks. So these are all the different things that were distributed all over India. There are 106 COVID care centers, 258 isolation centers that are established in, in, uh, in India to help uh, uh, people. So we talked about this mission and these are all the 500 or so different organizations um, that we are partnering with. Um, this is not a partnership recently. These are all the um, non-profit organizations that we have partnered with over a period of years. And uh, uh, that's how we were able to do it because of the volunteers and also the the partner organizations. One last thing I will, um, I will, I want to emphasize is that preparing for this uh, third wave, what we thought is rural infrastructure is needs a big overhaul in India. So at least uh, trying to fill up the gap from where it is to where it should be. So we realize that there are five things that are missing at this time for improving the rural healthcare in India. So one of them is obviously the training of those doctors over there. So for that, we are coming up with the doctors who will give this training to, it may, be, may not be correct to say training, but it may be more like a knowledge sharing. So um, knowledge exchange between the doctors in rural India to anywhere in the world, so that if they have any questions or prepare a curriculum, that's one about the training. The second one is the equipment. So through the money that is generated through these non-governmental organizations, non-profit organizations, we want to develop the, send out these um, equipment to those places, be it ventilators, transport ventilators, even ambulances, and also 
the BiPAPs and CPAPs and oxygen concentrators, et cetera. So the third one is basically the support. Uh, with the partnership with eGlobal Doctors and uh, um, Ad Advamed, Advamed is a kind of a uh, consortium of around 36 different ventilator companies all over the world. And they are providing their engineers to give the support and uh, to troubleshoot and uh, train people in India who may, who may be handling these equipment. If that equipment that is in rural India, if it is not working, there is nobody to helping, it's getting locked, uh, locked up and not being used. So that's the third part, which is the support part. The fourth one is the ambulances. That's, as we all know, it's very, very hard to get the transport done. So there's a uh, plan that is working on that we can come up with these ambulances uh, for each of the district, uh, districts uh, so some ambulance services can be made up. The fifth one is obviously the network. If any one of you know any of these uh, wonderful, dedicated, committed uh, rural doctors who have a network, they may be in one district, two, three districts, or maybe long, want to partner with them so that we can improve the rural India. So once this proof of concept is established, we want to you know, um, work with the PMJ program to be able to improve that rural infrastructure and healthcare de delivery in the villages in India. 75% of the population in India is rural. Only 28% of the doctors live in the rural area. So that's the big, uh, big divide there, big gap there. And together we can all, at least um, this will be a catalyst for us to start the process. And over a period of decade or so, we could reach the complete uh, independence of this rural healthcare in India. With that, thank you again. I uh, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to send a chat or email to me. Thank you. Thank you, Prasad. Uh, thank you, Seva USA and Seva International for doing a wonderful job partnering with API, e Global Doctors. I think uh, it's been a wonderful partnership. And I think as Prasad said, we're also working with uh, biomedical engineers and the technician to see how we can make use of all the equipment which is being sent from the United States and throughout the country. All these companies are ready to provide their technicians to give the service to make them utilizable, even though warranty is expired. So through eGlobal Doctors, we're also working through all these uh, companies so that we can make use of all the equipment which can be used. Uh, thank you, Prasad. Uh, thank so you. now that I think uh, uh, then API, I think really done a wonderful job. I think, uh, I think as Sudhakar said, I think we raised about, I think uh, API raised about over $5 million over the last three to four weeks. I think he's been sending a lot of oxygen concentrators and trying to put oxygen plants. I think I've never been so proud of RP physicians and RP team coming up with so many new initiatives and taking care of the, the motherland as well as here. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the, the main topic for today is the mycosis by the world famous uh, Dr. Dwarak Nath Reddy, ENT physician uh, from Hyderabad. Uh, Dr. Dwarak, we call it Dwarakana as like as a big brother to all of us for all the Indian associations in United States. Whenever we want to do anything in India, he's our convener, overseas coordinator, whatever we call. I think he is the person to go to. He's like, a, I think even though he's associated with so many associations, every time you pick up, you call him, you pick up the phone. He answers, takes care of it, takes care of the problem. So I'm so proud to call Dwarakana. He's our, from my alumna, alma mater, Karnal Medical College. He graduated uh, MBBS from Karnal Medical College. And then initially, initially started in Kakinada, came to Karnal, and then he finished his ENT in Andhra Medical College in Vizag. And then he went to Warangal to work for, for a few months. I think also his wife is from Kakatiya Medical College. So, and then he settled down in Hyderabad. So he pretty much covered the whole uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, all the medical, pretty much most of the medical college. The only other one friend of mine, Madhu, Dr. Madhuredi, who is our partner, also has done the same thing. But I think uh, Dwarakana has done pretty much covered the, all the medical colleges in the erstwhile well Andhra Pradesh. So he works as an ENT consultant in Hyderabad. He was, I think as Sudhakar said, he was the convener of API Global Health Summit in 2020-2021 in Hyderabad. I was a chair of the convention. I think he has done a superb job with his great team of uh, the volunteer physicians. And I think uh, we have to just go there and ask more like uh, the visitors. And then he has done a wonderful job with the Global Health Summit. He's also overseas coordinator for ATMG USA. 
అమెరికన్ తెలుగు అసోసియేషన్ నార్త్ అమెరికన్ తెలుగు అసోసియేషన్ తెలుగు అసోసియేషన్ తెలంగాణ అసోసియేషన్ ఆఫ్ నార్త్ అమెరికా సో he has done like a wonderful job with being an overseas co- coordinator for so many years he is also uh, very active in the academic circle he was the editor of the indian journal of otolaryngology and head and neck surgery for i think over 5 years and he is also very active member of indian medical association he was member of cwc as well as he served as the secretary of indian medical association hyderabad branch and also recognized as the best ima secretary so i think all in all is not only a great ent surgeon but excellent organizer and great human being daragana uh, i think it's nice to know you we want to look for, looking forward to your great talk mm-hmm. on uh, mucormycosis and what is going on in india right now and how else we can know or how we can help thank you hmm. thanks a lot uh, everyone of you good morning to all my friends in uh, across the seven seas uh, i have so many of you for me over there and uh, good morning to every one of okay. you and also at the same time good evening to my some other friends over here who has joined this particular program and uh, it's a really uh, honor that you people are given for me to uh, give my presentation for every one of you on this particular uh, subject that is uh, happening right now in the, our country right now but please put a uh, bring on my slides please so um, and uh, you all know that uh, the second so we had the, the so called the first wave has completed now we are on to the almost coming to the end of the second wave but the first wave we, d- we did see some of this uh, mycoromycosis but it never uh, uh, touched in the in the same way it has done now so in the second wave uh, the mycoromycosis we have been seeing in a, uh, in a different uh, platform next slide please so the the mycoromycosis you all are aware previous one yeah next uh, yeah be there so in the mycoromycosis you know all know that is a invasive fungal infection and uh, it is not the new one see this is uh, this particular thing where it has just come into vogue in a big way now but it is existing in the in our uh, society in our uh, everywhere for the last two more than two centuries so it is there for, is a quite old um, disease as such it has been identified long back and then uh, uh, it also because the mainly the concern is that earlier you we used to see this particular <laughs> case among the <laughs> debilitated <laughs> people and having the uh, renal transplants and um, um, the other uh, with the immunosuppression of people all that uh, all those people we used to see but not to, to the extent i used to, uh, what we are seeing now but now why this is happening this, Uh, next slide please so the mycoromycosis is uh, next is existing as i told uh, it is there every, everywhere but it is very much th- less in the western world it has been reported only 1.7 cases per million and in the europe also a little bit less than that in india of course because of our uh, uh, several factors of uh, uh, our uh, uh, geographical factors and the 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 temperature and the factors all this put together they are little bit uh, more it used to be but uh, now um, they are this uh, and this uh, another misnomer yeah okay next next please okay next one the that another misnomer the 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 press people have brought in this so called because it is it is known now as a black fungus uh, everywhere now every every person they come and then they think in terms of calling it a black fungus and uh, you all know that uh, this particular uh, this is now this particular fungus the main color is, is only silvery white it is a whitish uh, material only because one sister the why it has become the black, black black fungus is that because it erodes and then it is a um, fulminating sort of a character it has because it keeps on uh, um, whatever the comes in way um, uh, surrounding structures and all it is soft soft tissue or the, even the uh, bone is uh, material all that and all it will erode into that and then once it because the once the uh, this uh, circulation is impeded naturally it becomes the black so that is the reason i think it is the known uh, everybody is uh, the talk about this so called the black fungus but otherwise see this this is existing as it, it is there in front of you in front of me everywhere it is there but why is the see this is there it's ages and at the same time you should also should understand 
the diabetes is there for the ages it is not a new disease proper and again the infections that were there earlier also they are all there but why right now it is it is coming to this sort of a situation this is a clear cut and um, the um, the factors that are uh, that, that is concerned about this particular um, uh, mycosis are uh, the very fact that the particular strain in the first wave we had seen a different strain and now in the second wave now we are we are this is the different strain so this particular strain and uh, combined with all other several factors so it, it is causing this particular infection uh, in a in more more number of cases than what we can we used to see or what we have seen earlier so next please so and uh, you, you and the, and again, this, as I mentioned, these are all there in the environment, but mostly because the port of entry is through the nose. So this is the, though it is the, also, the, it can also through, through can uh, enter into the skin due to damage, somewhere the skin lesion is there, damaged skin is there. But uh, if it enters to a normal person, nothing is going to happen because the immune system that you have, it cannot do anything in the, in a person you are having, normal immune system even the people that are they're having that the diabetes yeah. and what other factors and all if you have they're okay in the uh, they're they're not uh, having any other issues it cannot cause anything but it's only the thing the people uh, who are having this uh, sort of a immunosuppression and uh, other factors now that is happening in the covid 19 so they're favoring this so the, this particular infection to continue and then this sports getting onto the no, nose and then embedded there and then start uh, um, um, I mean, the, uh, uh, eating away the mucus and entering into the, all the surrounding structures. So what are the things that is going to happen once it enters the nasal cavity? So the because of the weakened immune system or whatever it is, the, it is there in the particular situation at that particular time and the particular uh, person. So this will start increasing. This is uh, this in, this is, uh, the, this infection starts the, um, um, on the compromised individual. This will start uh, affecting the individual and starts um, acting on the uh, surrounding structures in the next place. So, and uh, it will start um, um, eating away the um, surrounding areas. So. Now, what I understand is that now that the present situation, there are about 11,000 cases in the country. Uh, the present, because all this, why the reason is that definitely any of the mucor mycosis cases that they, it has to be registered. Unless otherwise it is registered, the, you, they don't get that uh, uh, medication also. That is the reason uh, almost, so they may miss, miss here and there few of the cases, but uh, all the, there is the registry is there. So all the cases have been registered right now, and we have in the country about uh, um, close more than uh, close to maybe eleven to twelve thousand cases, and among that eleven to twelve thousand cases, next please, and about a thousand of the cases are in our state in Telangana, and also neighboring state also is equally good, uh, equal number of cases are there. So the, it is there everywhere now in the present situation. All the states they're having, they're all uh, having this uh, um, these cases. The reason may be, and uh, one of the factors is that the India is the almost something like a diabetic uh, um, capital uh, country of the uh, in the country, and uh, Telangana being the capital of uh, uh, diabetes in the uh, di um, diabetic uh, state in uh, India. So these are all factors putting together. Maybe it's, uh, some, the cases are though uh, com comparatively the number of cases of COVID are less in Telangana. And uh, compared to other states like Maharashtra and uh, some uh, Madhya Pradesh and other states and all, Kerala or whatever it is. But the number of cases compared to the, um, um, proportionately they're more in Telangana for the obvious reasons. So these are the, because the, we have that more diabetics over here compared to other parts of the country. Next. So that is another, that is another factor that is the, maybe the other reason also, um, uh, we are having more, more, more number of cases right now. But of course, the, the, um, and why this is happening, the important factors one has to be kept in mind, the COVID, uh, uh, that the strain that is causing this thing. But at the same time, is it the fact that every COVID patient is getting? No. The, every patient having COVID and diabetes and uh, other comorbidities, are they getting? No. But why? So 
the 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 clear cut factors among the uh, what we have observed are some of the practical issues are number one okay covid is that this particular strain is number one and number another important factor we have observed the rise of serum ferritin the serum ferritin is definitely in most of these cases it is it is much on the higher side and it is a sitting duck for the uh, mucus to enter into the body and then that will see it starts propagating from there and also the leukopenia because the immune system is if it is little uh, comparatively less than i mean it is uh, in the covid 19 with the uh, all this uh, immuno compromised people the, the comorbidities people they, they may be having a immuno suppression so these are the people that also they will be going into it and other factor what we have observed at least my uh, the personal aspect of it the uh, these these people also the properly see the, the the mask they use see most of these cases we have been observing these cases not during covid mind it these are all post covid sequelae that are coming so for this uh, the reasons are see once they uh, the covid uh, they become negative or whatever it is still the immune system is less in the, the so they, they will not observe the same sort of a precautions to be taken they don't do it and they, they just they do in the um, usual phase the mask and all they use the mask they use it at all they re they keep on using the same mask so that is another factor and it becomes a soil and it becomes a sort of a moist this thing that also is a um, so another factor that they uh, uh, um, uh, propagates more of this mucor and if already uh, the uh, person is compromised that is uh, affecting them very badly the next please so and um, so uh, see uh, based on this i mean mainly we are concerned of course it can definitely um, uh, 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 affect any of these things but we are now we are seeing mainly the rhino sinusitis i mean through because they all enter through rhino, uh, nose and the surrounding uh, fact uh, surrounding structures like uh, sinuses and the uh, orbits the eyes and then ultimately the um, anterior cranial fossa affecting the cerebral uh, region also so these are the main factors that is happening now so through the nose the, the and, and and most of the times what we see this is unilateral thing that's also another important thing this is interesting thing what we have we have well, you had to say, uh, also look into it is most of the time is unilateral is very rarely it happens on the uh, bilateral uh, involvement mostly it is unilateral the reason could be because once it enters into a particular uh, um, side of the no uh, nostril so it starts growing from there and uh, keeps affecting but why not on the other side is that maybe the other side the mucus membrane maybe at that particular time is not harboring any of the factors so that so there what are the all the theories all this part of things we have to look into but the practically what we see it is a unilaterally we see mostly this involving uh, the rhino sinuses involvement and rhino orbital and then on to the uh, cerebrum next please so that's what see these are the mostly what we see the rhino maxillary the sinus sinus is involvement then going on to sphenoids then and the surrounding the superiorly then immediately they go to the orbit involving the um, um eye and then on to the cerebral region next please so i uh, of course these are the uh, these are the, what we look at it is that mainly these are the species of these are all the same group of mucormycosis they these are different uh, species that are of the same family the mucoris family and uh, all the other things are also they all come under this particular uh, uh, family which uh, cause this uh, mucormycosis next please then uh, so this is the port of entry as i told you so once you enter into the nostril see usually and you don't see mostly earlier see the um, now the difference of the, i want to just bring to your notice the usual procedure earlier it used to happen though it is the port of entry to the nose and it used to go into the lungs and then affects the systemic regions like the kidney and uh, other factors i mean mostly you, you see uh, the people who are in dialysis then you people are in the other status and all they used to involve the other organs but it's interestingly surprisingly now what we are seeing the mucormycosis in this particular now this pandem pandemic uh, time mostly they are all confining themselves to involving this uh, uh, 
factors of uh, nose, orbit, and uh, brain. So, uh, and uh, in that order, uh, uh, maybe it is only the nose, the area uh, in the initials. Uh, if you can identify the initial this thing uh, later, but it is one thing is very sure. It is a very uh, uh, fast growing mucor because uh, it um, um, the things become. Uh, 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 I mean, more and more in our in our time, not even this time. So they they get the signs and symptoms and all within no time. Uh, next please. So and uh, so these are the, some of the risk factors already I have mentioned. So mainly the diabetics and the, the leukopenic that uh, the uh, patients and having this. Uh, of course, the area the, we, uh, we used to have uh, the of course now even now also the malignant especially the even the hematological issues are there. The malignancy is related things and all. They are they are, they are emo, emo, immediately they will also get into this sort of a uh, problem. And uh, as I told this uh, serum ferritin. But rest of things and all, of course, we don't even uh, there are used to be the, the factors that used to have uh, their um, uh, important factors earlier because of this they used to get this mucor. But now they, these are not the important. Uh, they they are also the factors that will definitely suffice for the mucor to grow. But the more important fact is what we are, none of these things we, we are, are there nowadays. The only, they are having, of course, definitely, co, co, they are uh, having the, the diabetic status is uh, definitely high. And uh, uh, other is, uh, uh, immune system also, uh, they are also a little bit uh, down. And uh, other fa related factors, as I mentioned, they are all the things that are causing this mucor. Uh, the, uh, now this particular thing that is happening right now. Next, please. So, uh, so these are uh, other adding factors also. Again, this is important factor that is also coming malnutrition. This is also another thing that is also causing the, big, the uh, proper nutrition, especially in this COVID uh, people. If they're not, they're not taking the proper um, uh, nutrition and uh, uh, combined with other all the risk factors are there. And there's the people also and uh, getting this mucor very easily. And rest of things are all not that common, not, not that common now comparatively. But one of the important factors also is corticosteroids and antibiotics. The corticosteroids, no doubt that earlier, tons and tons of corticosteroids are being used for several other conditions also, in rheumatic diseases and other factors also, there is no doubt. But now what is happening is that because the, 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 this, because the COVID infection, the immune system is down. So at that particular time, and in, uh, most indiscriminately, because we have seen some of the patients, especially if the, the rural setup and all, straight away without any, uh, um, I mean, waiting for any time, at least the lag, lag period of five days or seven days or whatever it is, without waiting for any of those things, straight away, they, none, no other medication will be there. They will be putting all sorts of corticosteroids, whether it is uh, uh, um, any other, any of the factors like uh, dexamethasone, it could be otherwise uh, uh, other metrol, dipometrol, any of these factors also they used to give. So not metrol, uh, so the straight away they put this thing. So they are also equally um, the reason for this also to grow. So uh, indiscriminate use of corticosteroids. It is judiciously if they use, now nothing much is happening. So that is another factor. That is also the another factor that is. Uh, causing this particular thing to uh, be, uh, become more. Next, please. And next. So, next, please. So, what? Uh, and uh, so these are all the factors, of course. These are all, uh, they come with the uh, usual routine, um, uh, especially uh, redness in the eye. These are all initial, initial, initial factors only. But if we can sus suspect uh, they are taking into the history and other things and all. If we could uh, um, block this at this particular stage, we will be doing a lot good for these patients before they go in for other serious uh, uh, things like uh, involving the other all other other of the structures around the um, uh, around uh, sinuses or orbit or uh, uh, all these factors. So these are the initial symptoms that that they they will be having. And warning sickness, uh, symptoms. Next, please. And of course, these are all the later on what we see. And um, the, uh, but again, the small initial initial symptoms like um, 
like uh, they the, the, sometimes they say the sort of a discharge uh, blackish discharge coming from the nose is also one of the uh, this thing and more important is cru uh, cruciate pain and one side of the uh, that say on the same side of the facial pain so and also starts in this um, uh, this uh, maxillary region the cheek starts swelling up with the sort of its changes with uh, slight change of cellulite changes will be seeing and and also other ch changes that will be seeing once they we see in the open the mouth we will be seeing sort of a blackish pigmentation on the palate so that is also a initial sign so these are some of the things where we can uh, we, uh, we look into the sort of a uh, signs and all we, uh, based on their symptoms if we could uh, uh, investigate at that initially we can um, definitely uh, stop this particular thing growing further next please and uh, as a, uh, of course these are the sort of the uh, initially they start with the sino nasal and then on to the orbits then to the uh, cerebrum as i already mentioned next these are the stages what we see and mostly these are some of the uh, in a presentation they'll come with as i mentioned already and we had to suspect but one thing now because of the uh, factors that uh, uh, government or uh, uh, people are uh, now educating the and uh, the result coming up so the uh, the people themselves they are coming initially they never used to have uh, they never used to give the more importance now slightest any sort of a um, uh, symptom is there they are coming and then they want to rule out because uh, other day the lady comes saying that there is a blackish sort of pigment below the i am uh, lower um, lower eyelid which is usually happens in the lady of uh, Uh, 50s and all due to the hormonal changes, but in the, in, even that sort of a thing. So they want to have. So they they they, they only think in terms of uh, uh, sir, is there any black fungus? Uh, this uh, this thing is there. We want to just uh, get it ruled out. So like that, there is sort of a um, um, people are getting. So they they themselves are getting educated in this uh, particular. Now most of the people are aware of certain things, uh, facts that uh, that is happening. so they are coming uh, and um, they are coming in initial now so that uh, the we can uh, we once we start investigate then we will be knowing whether we are dealing with a case of uh, micromycosis or uh, something different next please oh uh, yeah this i as i told you that that uh, nasal cavity we will be seeing that uh, so once we see into nasal cavity sometimes we see the blackish uh, uh, tinge over there and uh, some sort of a necrotic tissue sometimes we see and the same palatal region we will be seeing uh, um, maybe a po posterior uh, coina region also that palatal region sometimes the blackish tinge sometimes also will be able to see which is a strong suspicion of uh, having mucor next please of course these are all the uh, lesion alterations they come in the later stage but not the uh, next please so basically and um, um we uh, i mean depending on their symptoms we have to get into that and then uh, try to uh, evaluate and uh, if we have some sort of a suspicion and uh, take the lesion and send for uh, histopathological examination and uh, culture also but before we, in the slightest uh, um, um, so, uh, doubt is there it is better we treat it as a mucor than uh, because we we should not wait till uh, the, um, so the um, accepting that uh, histopathological definitely the fungi that uh, um, we, we, they will be we will be able to see and then the, uh, also sort of a um, uh, other uh, factors and all but till that uh, uh, till till uh, we try to get that but we where to once there has a suspicion and uh, also get into the other mode of tests also including uh, next please uh, including uh, so the the In, these are early diagnoses is the key figure so how we do it so by one is the clinical examination and the suspicion is that they take the uh, lesion for the examination and also some sort of a pain all this in that you need we need to go for ct scan the ct scan is mandatory to get in, uh, to know the any sort of a involvement is there and more than ct scan Also, MRI also is uh, important in these cases. The reason is simple. 
because CT scan will be knowing the any bony involvement because this uh, heart brain play because it, this uh, involves the bony structure also, and uh, MRI will definitely uh, indicate the the soft tissue lesions are there, so that uh, we'll be knowing uh, uh, the extent of the lesion, and accordingly we need to work up. So, so with uh, early, uh, early diagnosis uh, and uh, uh, last slide, previous slide. So the um, early diagnosis is one. And uh, if uh, we could know initially, then we can, without, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, without going for any surgical intervention and medical intervention can be definitely taken up and then the things can be reversed. But uh, if there is a the involvement of the uh, sinuses and other structures are there, it is a surgical debridement is a must. So now most of these cases we are seeing in the third stage. That's the, what we are doing mostly this third sort of very few cases we are uh, uh, encountering, of course, now few of the cases definitely they are coming very early, which they are the special suspicion they want to rule out. And, uh, and those are the cases, so if we can find out certain of this thing, we can definitely reverse it back with the medical treatment. I will enumerate uh, the, the part of it. And, uh, and the next in the line is uh, so we need to give surgical uh, debridement. Follow, I mean, along with that, we need to give the, the antifungal treatment also. So this is the line of uh, treatment we need to add up. And uh, next please. So, and, uh, and unfortunately or fortunately for this two centuries uh, disease, there is a only drug for the last uh, one century. That is nothing, none other than amphotericin B. Only change that has come now is that we have liposomal amphotericin, which is less toxic. Otherwise, the same drug is continuing only, but uh, there are additional uh, medications come, but they are not that, uh, um, I mean, uh, actively they, they, uh, act against this mucor than amphotericin B, but uh, because of the non-availability of this amphotericin B and uh, li especially liposomal uh, amphotericin, uh, which is a costly affair for individual. So, uh, the, the very fact is that most of these people, they are involving themselves are from uh, uh, the middle class or social, social economic, low class people only, they most of them, they're, they're lining up with this sort of a situation because of several factors, lack of hygiene, lack of nutrition, lack of their knowledge of uh, other factors and all, and also indiscriminate use of several medication and comorbidities, all these things put together, they're landing with this problem. But unfortunately, when they land up with this problem, they go to a place of, uh, uh, that is the reason most of this, uh, especially the government setup, they are doing they are, every day. They are doing about 50 to 60 cases of uh, in each hospital. They are doing not less than 50 to 60, 60 cases of this uh, micro uh, mycosis, uh, surgical uh, debridement with along with the medication and all that. The medication also is not, is a compromised medication that is happening because of the lack of uh, this uh, me, me, this me, 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 amphotericin B in the sufficient quantity. So that is also another factor that is happening. But however, there is unfortunately, there is no other uh, treatment other than this a couple of medicines, like uh, the other medicines being posaconorajol. And uh, so these are some of the, uh, only few medicines are there. And, uh, um, um, uh, but main, the, the main the treat, uh, medicine being um, uh, this uh, amphotericin B, uh, 5 to 10 gram, uh, milligrams uh, per, per kg, kg, kg body weight. Uh, per day treatment costs nothing less than uh, 30 to 40,000 rupees. And uh, the minimum number of days, depending on the, their, uh, the fact that they're having the problem, it is minimum to 15 days to several months. So this is the uh, scenario that what is being faced. So, and uh, that, next please. So this is the this is where we stand here right now. And uh, same, this lamp, uh, liposomal amphotericin B is uh, cost, costly than amphotericin B. But fortunately, uh, uh, amphotericin B also, the, our people are able to tolerate uh, the more than anybody else. They are not, uh, so because it's a nephrotoxic, no doubt, because it is it has to be given under the uh, guidance of a uh, nephrologist. So all these things are there, but fortunately, most of the things because of the non-availability, much of uh, uh, liposomal amphotericin B, amphotericin B also is being given. Fortunately, most of the uh, people they are having they, they don't they are not getting into much of the problem. But uh, uh, next please. 
so then uh, they are able to uh, um, tolerate it and uh, um, um, <clears throat> and uh, that may medicine but only thing but as i told the, um, the that if the people, even the people are able to some of the people uh, they want to, they are effort they want to they, they can afford but this is all rooted through the government we cannot take any uh, not even single vial will be available for to buy from uh, uh, outside because they, there is a system that is there so once this registry is there then they have to uh, put a application then uh, to the government then they will supply uh, we, every day they have to give it, uh, six to depending on the situation five to six seven vials a day and if, uh, they give for two, two three days again the same system so because of this non availability and this sort of a problem they are not getting the proper sort of a, a medication as such so this is the uh, area wherein there is a, a little uh, different problem is there right now i think uh, uh, um, some of the places also debridement also they are differing for the simple reason even after debridement and uh, because i have uh, some of the hospitals in uh, tamil nadu because uh, the, some of my friends hospitals and all i know they are also doing but they are not able to do anything because of the non able to get the proper medication next please next so and um, next next please ah uh, anyway no go back yeah that's okay next so i think this is no keep it there uh keep it there so so this is one of, these are the things i just want to bring to your notice and another factor that is also i just want to tell is that this is not a um, this doesn't spread from person to person that is another factor it is uh, there is a lot of a problem here because the people they think that it is a sort of a infectious diseases come from e uh, by uh, direct contact no that uh, that is that will never cause this this is not a uh, this not uh, that sort of uh, this is that this will not happen that way so that also we are educating the people in the tangle so now this is a these are things that is happening as far as the mycoramycosis is concerned i think one only solace is that now the covid uh, uh, cases have come down definitely there is a lot of uh, for the last at least 10 to 15 days definitely the uh, uh, unlike because my mine is the best example i have i used to see almost like a 50 cases a day on online i used to treat uh, uh, covid patients in the month of april uh, in the entire month of april i have seen i have treated about 1300 cases uh, 30 to 400 cases uh, on online in the month of may i have treated about 900 to 930 or 940 cases now in this month definitely initial few days they were there but now i am hardly seeing any cases and today my count is only 5 so that is the that is now the things are covid cases are coming down and uh, similarly of course this uh, mucormycosis cases will come, definitely come down if i take another month the reason is that there's all the post covid uh, um, um, infections that are there catching up because of uh, as i enumerated of because of the things that are uh, um, uh, that is uh, that is happening now so ultimately i have to tell one uh, practical issue is that this is happening only because of this particular why it has not happened earlier or uh, several years together why is not happening only in particular plan this this time it is clearly a clear cut indicator because of the um, covid um, uh, this particular strain and again some uh, some of the question even now the vaccination is there any relation there is no direct relation at the same time there is a indirect relation because we are also encouraging the people to go for vaccine also keeping this uh, informing them because this is a fact because at least they will have now people are getting uh, knowledgeable and they are definitely going for vaccination most of them on their own they are going including in a lot of villages all that and all so we are telling them this, by taking this also you can avoid it is not that uh, mucormycosis uh, not directly will not come by taking vaccination they will not get the they will uh, most of the people at least 90 of the people percent of people they will not get the uh, true sort of a covid infection which ultimately may lead uh, later on uh, uh, to get into sort of a mucor so with all these factors we are also encouraging the people and now the people are uh, definitely going for it and again the shortage of vaccine is there i think that uh, maybe in 
a time, month's time or so. Now it, that, that also is getting improved. I think the vaccination, once the, um, they, I think almost now, now every day they are doing, uh, what I understand is more than a million cases, they are, they are giving vaccination per day. So I think that that also will uh, improve now. So with all these factors, now I think this is where we stand right now in the country. Um, because the uh, mucor cases, unfortunately, as I told, the main factor is that the lack of, because they never expected this kind of uh, patient, uh, number of cases will come. And uh, um, uh, that's why they don't have, because in, in the earlier, the efforts in B and all, they never used to use so much. So much. Same, same, the repetition of same thing, what it happened. The second wave, when it started, why there was a lot of demand for oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Now that is not there. Because so initial, so because suddenly when the oxygen requirement has gone from 10 folds, from 40 metric tons to the 400 metric tons, so, so naturally all the everything crashed up. And the same thing now, uh, in regard to mucor also, uh, there is only one drug uh, that is uh, this thing apart from the other uh, um, um, medication. So the, which is not available in the in abundant uh, uh, quantities. And I, uh, so from this platform, I just want to make a request. See, you're all giving this uh, concentrators, uh, oxygen, whatever. They, 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 maybe they all require. But now the present situation, they, the, their requirement is uh, definitely has come down. I think only requirement, uh, the, uh, the present uh, needs is that the medication for COVID and medication for COVID, I mean, this uh, mucor. So anybody having an international trade license, I think we, we better procure that and supply rather than uh, uh, giving uh, uh, oxygen concentrators and other things and uh, uh, other aspects of it. There's a lot of concentrators have come. I don't think they'll be making use of it. To, and hopefully, if, uh, if the third wave doesn't come, it will be good. If the third wave comes on, I think maybe they will be definitely useful. But uh, the, as things stand now, right now, I think this is where we stand. And uh, these are the, certain of the practical points in regard to the my, mucor mycosis. And uh, I just want to um, educate the um, uh, people, even you have the, uh, you can also, because you're also dealing from there to your villages. So you can educate the people to take care of all these precautionary things so that they can avoid getting this mucormycosis with all the comorbidities. The people are all having comorbidities. Everything is there, but only certain of the people where they're, they're getting for all these practical purposes, what I told. Thank you very much for your uh, patient hearing. And uh, this is, uh, I just want to uh, put forward, put present uh, before you all the practical aspects um, that is happening right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dwarakana, for a wonderful presentation. It was superb. We haven't seen that much of Mucar in our lives. I think that there's so much more. I know there are a lot of questions. Um, so I'm going to go one by one. Uh, I know you already answered some of the questions. So there is a question from uh, Dr. Avinash Gupta from New Jersey. Use of steroids and diabetes was there in the first wave as well as USA. Then why there is more mucormycos in second wave and almost none in USA? Is it because of use of industrial oxygen? No, 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 no. That is also has been ruled out. See, even earlier also industrial oxygen uh, they were using. But anyway, it, 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 this are, see one thing has to be. Purely, these are not. These are the people only. They they uh, using this oxygen and all. They they did not get some of the people without oxygen levels. I mean, they, they never used oxygen. Also, they also got it. But what I understand is that. But uh, the, it is not a that um, uh, that is not related to this so called this uh, uh, industrial oxygen or whatever it is because that is only at times they have used. But earlier also they were using the same thing. But uh, as I indicated. Uh, again, the tons and tons and uh, cortisones uh, they used to, they were using earlier also, but now why it is happening is that these are the factors: the strain, the serum ferritin, uh, immune system, and uh, uh, hygiene, malnutrition. So these are all the factors. I think they are all combining together, uh, the, uh, causing this particular uh, uh, now to uh, have uh, have more cases now. Okay. So what, what do we tell? our colleagues in uh, India, and also when we talk to our friends and family, the physicians. So how do you, I know prevention is, seems to be the key. 
I know you said about the steroids, indiscriminate use of steroids or higher dose of steroids, especially in people with a diabetics and with a bad hygiene or a lot of oxygen, nasal cannulas, changing the cannulas on a regular basis. So those are kind of, would help. Is there anything else we should tell our, especially in the people in the second tier cities or people who are living in the nursing homes? Is there anything specific you suggest? No, no, that's not. See, hygiene part of it is definitely is important. I tell you an uh, interesting factor here. See, this is also studied. Some of the new, see, they have started some new places uh, uh, the treating COVID, uh, COVID patients with uh, oxygen uh, uh, supply or whatever it is. Those are the places where they have started recently with the uh, oxygen supplementation. Now, they, from there, with all the comorbidities and all, hardly any patients have got mucor cases. And uh, it has been observed. Those are the people who are treated in a, um, other places the, where already so much of earlier so many cases and all were there and uh, and uh, not the, uh, uh, yeah, the gadgets which they were using were the, the older ones so so these are also the factors also they have ultimately found these are also the factors supplementation supplemented to cause this mucor also this is another interesting factor that has been observed and again the proper usage of nasal uh, this uh, uh, fangs and all see what when what they use that all they keep re reusing and all they don't properly make use of that so uh, the, these are also other factors and all they, they uh, the the um, uh, the, uh, the uh, what are the tubes and all they could keep so there are all the factors that also so, um, um, they are also causing this particular thing to become more but the new uh, the new structure and somebody using the new places and all some of them not. Uh, they, this is an observation that has been also noticed here. Okay. There's another question. Is there increase in candida at the same time in the last few no. months? Uh, surprisingly, no. Surprisingly, no. Because, see, that's what I'm telling. See, this, uh, as you all understand, this, uh, this particular thing is candidiasis. Of course, earlier, it is there. Candidiasis, we keep uh, 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 seeing this, but th there is no increase of candidiasis uh, at this stage. But definitely there is increase of mucor is there. But candidiasis is uh, surprisingly no. Uh, but again, uh, see, um, uh, uh, but the factors related to this are uh, same thing. But uh, this is also important thing. The uh, usage, pro proper usage of mask. See, mostly they don't, uh, these people, they don't, they, they keep using this mask for uh, days together without knowing that uh, it will become soil and it will become uh, that uh, moisture, moisture, so that all will contain and all that will cause, because already they are having problem with this. So I, I tell you each and everybody, if they can afford, uh, the best thing is that, so use uh, surgical mask every day, they have to throw it out. And, uh, and uh, over and above, the N95 is there, if somebody can afford, use the surgical mask or over that to keep the N95. N95 can be recycled once in five days or six days. You keep six sets of that. Once in six days, you can use it. But the surgical mask, which you are using the normal one, the three, three layer or whatever it is, is good enough for a day. And then, uh, so these people, what they do, whether it is a cloth mask or a surgical mask, they keep using it for a days together. With the cloth mask also, let them use. That is also good. But they have to properly I mean, wash it and dry it and then keep using on an alternative basis. So that will definitely take care of this. So these are all the certain of the practical things which has to be observed, which they are not, most of the people, they are not observing. Thank you. And another question about the medicines, the drugs. I think we've been seeing on the WhatsApp groups uh, multiple times for their family. Is there any amphotrysin available in Bangalore or Hyderabad? So there's a question about these drugs, either your uh, regular amputation or the other amputation you're talking about, are these drugs available in government hospitals when compared to private hospitals? Is it the same or uh, one? No, no, the entire supply is there in the government hospitals only. No. So government hospitals also, they're able to, the, now, for example, the, the Kote hospital, they do, and then they have every, all the supply there. They have enough, enough structure is there. But unfortunately, when it comes to the point of any private uh, people, they have to again apply to the government and get it. And and these people only will cert certify, they will certify, but there are some centers will be there. So they have to go to that particular chemist or whatever it is, they get that. But they, they in that they will be indicated only to give this many of, uh, uh, almost they are giving on a daily basis. So that is where the problem is. Because so, uh, every patient to go and get it, the, this medication on a daily basis, 
so uh, it's a difficult task you know uh, and moreover the money also is involved here the even the poshakona also of course poshakona jol is available plenty no doubt even in the step down treatment that will cost not less than 2000 rupees per day so for a common person it is a, it is definitely some sort of a, um, a thing to be kept in mind so th this is where i am uh, i mean i am looking some sort of a support from the agencies for this kind of people of course the people who are there in the government hospital they are getting everything for free no doubt thank you i know i think uh, sudhakar and uh, rp has been working through the, the i think under the guidelines how we can send the medicines and the vaccines i think there are a lot of uh, the, uh, the hurdles which we have to pass through to get the vaccines and the medicines just because of the the way rules are there and i think uh, rp has been working hard along with uh, other uh, ngos and other organizations to make it happen uh, another question i think good information from indian doctor as we rarely see this here do you think that the local bad hygiene and soil water contamination is contributing as a major factor no 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 i don't think so see it is, see of course hygiene is definitely is a factor no doubt hygiene is the ultimately the, 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 it is there but the water uh, water only thing see drinking water and all is not going to make a difference at all the water the humidifier water if there you are that is another thing now that you brought this question what they are doing humidifier so sometimes they use uh, as if this uh, uh, which is we are not supposed this bottled water also sometimes they, that is not the uh, right thing to uh, do <clears throat> what we uh, tell them is boiled and cold water to be uh, used that the humidifier that humidifier also has to be cleaned every day properly and then put it and all that uh, tubes also has to be um, uh, uh, sterilized so that these are the factors not the water and uh, 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 straight away water alone is not going to make it yes hygiene is a factor no doubt about it because unless otherwise you see uh, they, they, uh, i told you know and they go out, uh, without any using mask and all immediately post covid uh, time and if they go with a uh, mask with the, with the things what i told if they catch up somewhere because after all mucor is there in the plenty in the atmosphere that neither you can avoid nor i can avoid it is there in plenty in front of you uh, only thing is that why it will catch this sort of people is that because they are the sitting ducks in the given situation that's all okay. and the question from uh, dr sudhakar can repeated steam inhalations can predispose one to a mucormycosis yeah initially we thought yes, that is also important thing because earlier i was using people used to they from one whether they covid is there or not the people thinking that about doing steam inhalation inhalation throughout the day the covid will not come close to them so that is also is not correct now we are that is a important thing also practical thing that we have to now educate everybody there is no need of keep on stay, uh, taking inhalation uh, uh, number of times a day if at all they want to just clear it up of course initially maybe once or this thing is okay but there are people continuously they keep doing this inhalation for no good so that is all says because by that what will happen is that there is definitely the mucous membrane in the nose that gets damaged and the, uh, so naturally if some sort of other factors are there so they will be useful for this uh, uh, mucus to grow there and that is also a factor to be kept in mind not to uh, ask anybody to keep on taking inhalation or whatever it is okay thank you there's a question from dr ravi bathina covid patients with loss of smell are they more vulnerable to get this fungal infection compared with somebody who doesn't is there any data on that no no what no no lot of loss of smell somebody who has a loss of smell as a part of covid loss of smell no 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 loss of smell is again not related to uh, of course covid definitely covid infection is one of the important symptom that comes but that is only a transient time but the, again that is not a, uh, the, why that happens is that because of the sort of inflammation it is a hyper inflammation that causes at the um, uh, um, um, uh, spinal level so that will definitely block this so once that uh, um, uh, inflammation subsets the uh, edema comes down the smell will come back and most of the 99 because we have been almost 
ஒன்னும் <laughs> fortunately of course when it is uh, the, see this uh, definitely mortality is definitely high uh, once the mucor is affecting the uh, um, systemic uh, uh, region but this is confined to sort of a um, if it is going to be sinusitis orbital uh, with the orbital acceleration and then the debridement with the proper treatment there is no mortality at all but uh, involving the brain i mean uh, sort of cerebral region all these things suddenly it is a badly uh, already uh, um, uh, bad, bad sort of infection is there definitely 50% of the mortality is definitely is there in that sort of a condition but uh, see day in and day out the, all these surgeries are being done in uh, whether is gandhi or uh, usmani i mean ent or some of the private hospitals there not much of uh, um, uh, mort- i mean uh, this thing is at all yes there is only so, very few cases with the, uh, more they they are having sort of if it gets into systemic sort of infection then they are going to have otherwise if it is confined themselves to um, uh, sino orbital and sino uh, rhino sinus uh, sino area region once the debridement is done the uh, um, this the treatment is given the definitely other day one child with a uh, diagnosis as having uh, uh, micro and by simply uh, by, uh, all the orbital cellulitis was just uh, g- g- was setting in and with the sinusitis all the cellulitis changes with the just sort of a amputation in proper treatment within a week the, the, everything has come down so uh, the another good thing with this mucor is that debridement was done and then everything is done with the uh, uh, amputation or the, uh, the, all the, the medication is there properly it will come down without a within no time that is another advantage with this particular um, uh, mucor okay. that another question from our another icu docs anup doc, dr anup kachal is there a role for prophylactic posaconazole or any other in the high risk patients no no not at all the reason is that it is not going to stop at all if, we, if the prophylactic posaconazole in no way it is going to stop and as such we don't think in terms of giving any prophylactic amputation b for that matter of course, for of course amputation b not at all mm-hmm. even posaconazole is it is not going to i don't think it will stop uh, as such the um, this uh, coming up uh, uh, maybe little bit role may be there but we, we have not tried uh, in a evident because that started coming up now because the if at all we have to see in, in, in next time if something you can say give posaconazole and then uh, whether the mucor is going to come or not and all we, we have not studied much on this particular aspect at all there is a question from uh, dr shri do you think this rare devastating condition should be treated in only at regional government centers so that amputation can be better managed also people specialize in you know debridement and all that can be done at one place rather than multiple small places it can see it, it is being done at several places now it is not confined to only few places the only thing issue is that it is being done is now most of this uh, corporate hospitals also the uh, department of ent they are all doing so it is not confined to few of these places but as i told the only hitch or only drawback here is that amputation b like um, the, that is the only thing otherwise the surgery and all these things and can all, can be done at any place and unfortunately we don't have many other uh, any other medication other than this so we have to apply and then get and then give, give this medication so the, the question of i know you're talking about the serum ferritin so serum ferritin is an inflammatory marker and steroid is yeah. one of the managements for the inflammation in covid is quite the question is is this quite challenging for management of covid when somebody has a high ferritin is it an inflammatory marker or you want to give more steroids but at the same time yeah. the serum ferritin can be a risk factor this 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 comes into the work with, because of the situation especially the diabetics see what is happening uh, if if you if, for your question if you are not a diabetic and all 
jolly well he, the steroid will take care of it with the, and the, they definitely give a good result but the problem is that okay steroid also uh, uh, and uh, mostly what is happening and we are also educating now to the people i mean our own colleagues if you are giving for a steroid if uh, at a home setup or whatever it is mostly the, this also happening that way five day steroid if it, it definitely it is giving good result and stop with it there is no need of tapering also if you give for five days be with it and, then, and then, uh, never think in terms of tapering the dosage also and and there is no uh, if, if you require beyond that then there is no point of somebody keeping it at home and then keep giving the steroids and all that is not the uh, that is not the um, uh, right thing also to be done okay if it is given in a sort of institutional setup yes you give steroid at the same time you also should think in terms of the, okay, uh, because every time you, uh, once this covid infection itself that hyper hyperglycemia is going up and with the covid and with the uh, hyper this uh, steroid still more it goes up so in a uh, start of uh, management in the sort of hospital setup that is fine and if you give steroid then also think in terms of bringing down the hyperglycemia uh, i mean hyperglycemia but that will not happen at a um in the home setup so that there also ah uh, another factor you are somebody mucor especially okay are you a diabetic no you go and get the test then it will be 300 ah uh, so till that time first of all they may not be aware of it or se- secondly maybe the mucor i mean this covid and other things may be uh, pushing it up so all these factors are there so, so at that time only they will be knowing they are diabetic so the, these are all the things factors also coming in way but however so we have to keep it in mind ultimately the steroid treatment is squarely or uh, uh, proportionately it is uh, the, in, into the uh, t- taking care of the hyperglycemia yeah, yeah that's, that's a very good point i think about one third of the diabetics actually they haven't even known in uh, india or even most even here to that they had they don't have diabetes and then they get into stressful situation steroids i think they they get the hyperglycemic response uh, another question is there any role for transnasal irrigation of nostrils sinus and nasopharyngeal area with amphotericin solution in the very early stages of the disease see it is again, again a question mark unless otherwise we are very sure of uh, the, this guy is uh, having some sort of a uh, and, and again it is not a sort of a uh, proportion is a, uh, is a costly proportion again because this is also think in terms because this cannot be done routinely number one the uh, routinely it cannot be done unless otherwise you have a high suspicion see high suspicion of this factor we can try that but uh, it is not the thing that we can uh, do on each and everybody having some slightest suspicion or all these things and all. we have to uh, do it uh, pre- before entering that definitely we know that we are going to deal with a mucor case <laughs> Well, that, was, that, was, that was a very great discussion. I think, uh, thank you, Dwaragana, for the wonderful presentation and uh, answering all the questions. I think uh, I know a lot more about mucormycosis. I know all the people who attended know a lot more about mucormycosis than what we have known about an hour ago. Uh, I think uh, we have pretty much answered most of the questions. The one last question about what do we learn from all this pandemic mucormycosis like a month ago before the mucor, now that we have like more mucormycosis cases, how we can prevent the future and uh, is it going to be the same but us or uk or the other countries what is your like a guidelines or suggestions so, you can give uh, uh, so yeah, as far as the, the things are concerned over here so these are the factors what i told so to be kept in mind because ultimately we should educate the uh, public because the, the how to avoid black, so called the black fungus black fungus they call so so in their own terms we should tell them so if you if you follow this and all you will not land up with black fungus and one of the factors now is the vaccine one thing and the hygienic factors and other things what all i just enumerated so these are very important but as far as the concern but uh, i doubt uh, see this will just come like that in any other because there are so many factors that are unfavorable in this because uh, no another thing why this is not there in pakistan why this is not there in bangladesh that many cases are not there because i we just, other day we were all discussing this point also because it came the news also we got from the uh, local people out there so see this is uh, confined to some of these things because the, reason, the re- reasons are many uh, as uh, indicated so i think we need to educate our people in a better way 
to avoid this sort of situation. I think now the thing people are definitely are much much aware of it, and the clinicians also are aware of it. Uh, uh, how to take care because it's all uh, daily basis of uh, learning only. Because initially we were not knowing what is the treatment to be given COVID. Now at least most of the most of us have some sort of a reasonable sort of you know, uh, knowledge how to take care of uh, the COVID patient. So this is where we stand. And I think similarly, we need to educate uh, all our people. And uh, because you're also part and parcel of our uh, our nation, and you also have this uh, sort of a, you, you have also have a role. And uh, and uh, in the future also, on behalf of Happy, let us uh, uh, publish also certain of these things and uh, give to the public uh, uh, about uh, um, what is to be done. And also, I should thank at this level and uh, Happy and uh, OGKMA and all other groups and all what the services they are rendering over here in our country uh, for the people. And again, I substantiate my thanks again, telling that I, uh, I will tell Sudha, that is for Sudhakar also being the president and maybe Anupama is there or not, I don't know, incoming. So they have to, uh, they have to think in terms of having somebody, definitely somebody will have international license. So the future is that you think in terms of now we only try to procure and then so that this will be more useful rather than the concentrators and all what we are getting now. I think this is to be kept in mind. This is where it is lacking the, be the best uh, any of the medicines. Leave alone so many, even COVID medicines I'm talking, not only mucor medicines. So these are the things I think you can think, think in terms of procuring and then give it to the uh, our people so that your people so that it will be more useful. Thank you, Tarakan. I think we did talk to PM's office about the international license, or at least in this time, at least get a five to six months of a temporary license while we're waiting. I think there were some issues from other countries, so they were they said they would get back to us almost like a three, four weeks ago. They still haven't done it. And we're also talking to Telangana government because I have a license in Hyderabad, but it's been inactive because I haven't renewed it. So I think there is a process, but I have to come there and do it rather than doing it over the, the mail. So I think we're also talking to the Telangana government to see if all the states, if they can get the licensure activated, at least for the people who already had license, that would be useful. I think at all for the people who are born and brought up in the United States, if they want to come back and do it, I know I think when uh, Dr. Harshavardhan, who was here a few, I think two years ago, he said it's simplifying the process so that we can go and practice within one application, within like one, one day, we can get the licensure at least temporarily to do procedure or give a talk and do some of the, the volunteer work. So hopefully that comes up, I think in the near future, especially in the current circumstances. So meanwhile, I think uh, we'll work on, I think uh, API. I think with the, the superb leadership from uh, Sudhakar, Ranapama, the upcoming Ravi, I think uh, Anjana, Satish, Amit, I think uh, there's a, 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 there are great leaders coming up. I think we'll definitely, we can keep up with the, the, the government of India so that we can work together, more collaborating with each other. Because I think this pandemic taught us a lot of things. I think we we'll need to learn from our experiences and make the lives better for the future. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but we should be ready. Sudhakar, so, any the final words? Yeah, thank you, Srini, for organizing today's webinar. Very, very interesting and very knowledgeable. Dwarakan did an excellent job uh, enlightening his community experience as a, a community physician. And uh, I learned more than Mukhara than anybody in my whole my career, you know, today. And uh, infection is very dreaded. I think, you know, uh, we will definitely look into that so you can be able to do deliver this kind of medications to motherland. And again, you know, we have our own obstacles uh, going through this um, uh, government issues and uh, you know logistics, and uh, definitely uh, we'll work on that. Thank you, Dr. Kamitari. Thank you. Yeah, I think on, on behalf of e Global Doctors, I would like to thank all of the people who have been serving, and especially volunteers. Volunteers have been doing a great job. We have over 100 volunteers with the supervision of uh, Dr. Ganeshan, who is from uh, CDC, I've done a superb job getting the the farms and going through the rural areas and they're doing a great job. So please, if you have time, if you can uh, volunteer or help with the uh, e-global doctors, I think we are looking in probably going into more areas with the SWAST Foundation and uh, working with uh, different states. So please do uh, go to eglobaldoctors.com and uh, register if you can volunteer or if you can work with uh, e-global doctors in the future to just connect with the uh, people anywhere in the world.
Uh, thank you. We'll end the session. La, 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 last word, last word from me. Yeah. Okay. okay. So <laughs> I should thank uh, each one of you and then another good luck for all the Atlanta convention that is coming up now. The Sudhakar, I think, I wish I would have been there. You know the situation. Otherwise, definitely I would have been there huh? uh, to, to be with all you, all you, all you people. And I, I, uh, I think I thank you, every one of you. Good luck to Sudhakar and uh, Sini, I think, for the coming up uh, Atlanta Convention and also the team that is going to come up. And I, I thank you. Uh, I wish everyone all the best and look forward to see you sometime. I mean, if the, hopefully, uh, the things should settle down and let us meet in person sometime. Uh, if, uh, in the, hopefully, this year, <laughs> uh, later this year or next year, uh, whatever it is. Right yeah, thank you. 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 Thank you.